Hey everyone, uh, this is Cody doing the Portal 2 level walkthrough for the level analysis. So today I chose the level because it was kind of mid-game and it just seemed a lot more um, easy to do. Uh, it's a lot less of trying to teach the player how to play the game. It's just introducing new mechanics in interesting ways, especially as a sequel to the first game. The first game didn't have any of the mechanics that we're going to be showcasing today, so I figured it was very interesting to see the very first introduction to brand new mechanics um, that hadn't even had any sort of reminiscent um, mechanics in the previous games or previous levels in this game so i wanted to choose uh this level the um repulsion gel level when you first get introduced uh, with cave johnson in the kind of broken down areas of the complex um it starts in you kind of are already going through these levels introduced to cave johnson the um narrator of the levels it had been Wheatley and GLaDOS before uh, you were introduced to them early on in the game but now you have been introduced to this new person and been thrown into this uh, kind of wasteland of uh, testing chambers that predate anything that currently is being used or was being used most recently um it's you can tell the aesthetic is very broken down and old in general a lot of the posters and different infographics are very old as well and you can kind of see in different mechanics uh kind of reminiscent of the futuristic look that happens in the other levels um when you get to these levels you see that like buttons are squares and they look a lot older boxes are very much simpler um and less refined um and the levels in general are older um, but they're just as easy when you go into the level so we open up the level we fall down in the elevator like we um, have been for two games so far and you open up into a large area filled with uh, the dirty water I guess is the best name for it um, that kills you on contact um, and resets the level um, you get kind of like a full dark you don't really know what's going on and then all of a sudden you're thrust into the light um, all the lights turn on and you can see this area that's set up above this water and it's very much older looking you get a first look at a map that may be useful to you you see the you are here but then you notice oh it's not even really that helpful to read you don't really know how it works anyway, uh, how their level structures are, so it <laughs> it's very unhelpful. Uh, but it looks like the ninth area out of, or maybe the ninth floor. I'm not sure how to read it really. Um, and as you look around, you see um, there's multi levels to this, so you think maybe uh, I might be visiting these later. Because um, normally the way Portal works, as you've known, is you go into an elevator to go into the next areas, usually that's when a loading screen happens and that's when the level ends. As we go through the level, um, we notice on the uh, tube next to the, th the catwalk, there is a, an arrow pointing that says gel flow. So you're not 100% introduced to this gel yet, so you're not sure what to expect, but you know there's an arrow. It's blue on a white background in the darkness, but it's uh, lit up so that you can catch your eye and see it, and it points directly to where you need to go. Um, there's another one just for aesthetics to point upward, showing that there is tubes going everywhere with this gel in it, so obviously it's going to be used. You can get a peek of it if you look up, but normally uh, people just kind of pass through this area without much thought. You see this far away um, little white area as well, and it uh, it can't really be used right now. It's something for later on.
Um, as you enter the room, you can see an art piece and a little uh, sign that may suggest what the next area is for. Um, specifically, this is repulsion gel. And if you think repulsion, it means like to put to like move away from uh, repulsive. You kind of want to get away as fast as possible. And you see a little sign next to it that indicates that this person was jumping onto a puddle and jumping high. Um, if you read the infographic, it just talks about how it tastes sweet um, and stopped being on the shelves because uh, food was bouncing out of the stomach and out of the mouth. So you can kind of get an idea that, yes, this blue gel bounces you. Um, and as you're reading it and you look over to the sign, you can kind of see the gel in a little pit. Uh, you're not sure what to expect, but you, there's nowhere else to go. So you kind of take the leap of faith, and there is many arrows to point you in the dire correct direction you need to go. So it's quite easy to know that you need to jump off the ledge onto the blue or across the gap if you can make it. But playing this game enough, you know that that jump is not possible. So you take the leap. And you jump across it and it kind of gives you a little safe space to hop around and test out your new abilities you kind of get the sense oh well i kind of jump the same height that i fell from so you can kind of use that in later levels um there's a few walls here that have little markings that show that you're probably supposed to portal to them um and so when you portal to them you get introduced to the exit immediately um and you get introduced to the pressure plate that opens the exit. And if you exit and look up, there is a um, little tube that says there may be a box that could come out of it. So uh, they don't put these things in here as uh, sort of a wild goose chase so that you are a red herring or something. So usually they have some sort of use within the level. Uh, it seems that you may be needing a box to put on this pressure plate, but it doesn't reveal to you right away where to get this box from. You can see the exit, so you're going to try and usually get to the exit, and if you look across the gap, you might be able to notice that there's a button there. So when you jump, you bounce as high as you just came from, so you can kind of test that out a little bit. Um... And looking around the level, you can kind of get a, get your bearings while you're jumping around. So there's a button over there. The next step is to jump the gap. And get to the button. So you press the button, and a box falls. And you notice that items and objects do, in fact, get affected by the repulsion gel just as well. It's not just people. So you can kind of use that to your advantage by going through... The or uh, by jumping and dropping things onto repulsion gel to kind of get it across gaps or other things. Um, you may get to use this in later levels. Um, it's just another mechanic that it introduces to you by uh, not letting you know that the box is going to fall immediately and as fast as it did. Um, and it just... It's right over the pit, so you didn't find it out by accident. It's actually by design that they put the box right over there so that you could find that out early on. So you've passed this level. You kind of get your bearings in the next area. Um, in that white wall you saw before, you can end up using right here to get up. Um, there's an arrow that's pointing to the next area. So... Coming upon this area, I mean, I know that there is a way that it was pointing me towards, so obviously I'm going to turn around and go the absolute opposite way. Me playing many games before, um, I know that usually going off the path gets me a little bit of lore, or gets me a, a special item of some sort, um, but this, this just is a nice little room, and it's very strangely well taken care of, like they weren't leaving in any rush. Everything was put away, so you kind of get a weird feeling that it was left there nicely on purpose, but everything is in such disarray around you. It's a very weird feeling. Um, and on to the next room. In the next room, there are more arrows to kind of point you in the direction that you're needing to go. 
Um, upon entering the room and looking to the right, you can see the sort of carriage that is going back and forth between these two points um, with some white walls above it, if you notice that, then you will kind of get the gist that you need to fall onto them, but you need to somehow get to them. So you are introduced to this uh, repulsion gel on the ground already. Um, so naturally you want to jump onto the repulsion gel, but um, you find out that you can just jump straight from it and it will uh, do the exact same effect. And upon turning around, you can actually end up seeing the exit at the top, but you can't really get there. There might be a different way to it. So the natural instinct in portals to just start solving the level until you finish the level. So standing on the button actually opens up that little portal area and stepping off the button closes it. And if you hadn't known from previous levels that when you hide a previously showing um, white area, then it will just close off and will close the portal. So you need to somehow get something to sit on the button and on the pulley system over here, there is a button or there is a box to put on the button. So you want to jump across, get that. You kind of get the instinct that you can kind of like toss it up there. I tried it, but obviously did not do very well. So I have to go back up and fix it anyway. Uh, going back over this from earlier, I just realized that uh, Portal has a really good way of making sure that you don't lock yourself out, out of level levels. So even though I missed the button with the box the first time, I was able to get back up and uh, actually fix it. So you place this on there, you're kind of getting to think with the repulsion gel, like maybe I can make that kind of jump and throw it onto it, but it's a good little test to try. So now I can go through the portal and you get the, the sense that you can jump this gap now. It's right above the repulsion gel, so. You wanna kind of jump across and obviously if you put, pick up the box to use on the next level, um, it will close that portal, so you have to go this way without the box, and it would get destroyed by the Emancipation Grill anyway, so it's not like you could use it. Um, and you're immediately introduced to this uh, very strange concept of the goo on the walls, and you don't really know what it's going to do. Is it going to, am I going to fall slowly? Do I have to do it at a certain height? Um, and just playing around in this kind of safer area will give you the feeling of what you need to do here. And across the gap is a box, so you know you need to go across the gap somehow, and you find out that you can wall jump, sort of, with the repulsion gel. Once you get all the way across, this is not the fastest way. Um, there is a faster way to do it by just dropping down and using the repulsion gel to get back up, but that is just another way to do it. So now that that is open, you know that you need to get down there, get through the portal, drop down onto the repulsion gel, and get to the exit that you saw earlier. And you can see that the jump is in fact high enough for you to make it all the way. And that's through to the end of the level. I find this level very, um, it was very entertaining playing through it for the first time um, in many, many years. Um, I basically played through it like a brand new player, um, discover rediscovering how the mechanics worked. Um, it was probably a little faster than a regular player who had never played the game before would do it, but it was still a learning experience. Um, it was a very good teaching for everything that you can do with the propulsion gel. This is the main concept of the next few levels.